agree with Alan Greenspan, we ought to just eliminate the debt ceiling. Oh, absolutely. We do. The ability of almost every working American to access more credit than they should have been able to mask the underlying fact that lower and middle class incomes were not rising. That's not a tenable strategy. Isn't that the time to eliminate it? Oh, we've been time a long time ago. Let's put aside terrorism. Let's talk only about our own homegrown animals that are patrolling America right now. So it goes down to the simplest thing. Be prepared, be vigilant. So we're going to undertake a full-scale, deep dissertation of what the FBI has... No, we're not. We're not going to even say the word FBI. I can't even imagine sitting down and reading. You know, those things cross my mind. Should I sit down and read this... This, these accusations that the FBI are putting up against Russia, these Russian hackers, these Russian trolls, these Russian tweeters, whatever it is you want to call them. You know, you can read the full report here. We have the full report. Read the full thing. It really makes me think about my life and how much time I have on the planet and who in their right mind would sit down and, and read a thing like that. Who in their... <laughs> If you want me to get to be honest with you, when I woke up and seen that this is something that the FBI decided to do is sort of levy their power against these Russian hackers, Russian propagandists, whatever they are. These trolls, what they really are is they were trolls. Right? They were trolls. Whatever whatever the outcome, if you really think that they swayed the election in favor of Donald Trump, I don't know what to tell you. That's what you believe. Okay, cool. Let's move on from there. But I do get a little nervous. I'll tell you why. Because we had a little interaction between the United States and Russia in Syria. I don't know if you read anything about that, saw that. I don't know. I don't watch the news, and I don't know what the news reports, to be honest with you. I assume that this was a monster story, so most people heard about the fact that there was some serious military action taken in this Syrian civil war that uh, pitted American weapons against Russian soldiers and Russian soldiers died. No surprise there. But right on the back of that we run into this thing where we're pointing fingers at our intelligence agencies are pointing fingers at Russians for what they did in the election. And when I put those two things together, though they're on different game boards, right? They're, they're pieces that are on different game boards. I can't help but wonder if it's all part of the same, you know, greater the greater plan. I don't know. I, it seems more and more to me that the intelligence agencies in this nation are working outside of the scope of the president and, and sort of that executive branch. And it's a nerve-wracking thing. What are their motivations? What, what are their motivations when it comes to relations with Russia? I don't know. That's why I don't want to talk about it. Because we will know we are preparing for s such a situation as a Russian-American war. And to be quite honest with you, Russian-American war is not going to be as much of a war as a lot of people think. It's going to be horror. It's going to be hell. But if you know anything about the size of the American military and the scope and the size and the scope of the Russian military, I think I think would be okay. I also don't think that our nation would fall into war with Russia because it wouldn't make sense at all. What threat does Russia pose to America? If you say they th pose a threat to America, we, we can easily limit that threat by pulling out of the Syrian civil war. But I understand that's a nationalist idea. And I wouldn't want to be seen as a nationalist. That's, well, that's... That's a scary accusation nowadays, right? That's a hijacked word, nationalist. They hijacked the word nationalist, and everyone just lined up with it. You look at the definition for what a nationalist is and tell me that you're not a nationalist. If you're a parent, if you're a grandparent, if you're a business owner in this nation, you tell me how you're not a nationalist, how you don't care about the na this nation above all others. Just... Go read the definition. Don't read the definition that they give you on the Drudge Report or CNN or the articles that are written by nitwits who have a political agenda to push. 
I'm not scared of the word nationalist. No, not even a little bit. Not even a little bit because I know what it means. And it means this it, it means the same thing that it's always meant. I don't care what anybody says. I'm just very surprised that even people on the right wing have started calling Nazis white nationalists. White supremacists, white nationalists, totally different. It's a totally different thing. The word was hijacked and everybody on all sides of the media just went right with it. They went right along with it. It was a progressive gameplay that I think went just about as good as it could go for them. Let's turn the idea of nationalism into a bad thing. Let's turn the idea of patriotism into a bad thing. Let's turn it into a villainous thing. How else can we put America off balance? Well, we take her most vehement supporters and we accost them. Pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. I expect it, but I don't expect uh, the laziness from the people at Fox, from the right-wing news media to go along with it and not correct it. The people at the Drudge Report, I don't. Ex I expect them to do better. I expect them to say, we're not going to post anything and say anything about white nationalists because what is being portrayed as a white nationalist is, is something totally different. follow me but we're not here to talk about any of that miserable stuff because I don't have the the breath for it to be honest with you I really don't I don't have the breath for it what I have what I have the breath for what I have the spirit for what I have the heart for and the desire for it to talk about on this show is strong communities healthy Americans dynamic lifestyles and self-sufficiency that's the I Am Liberty show now. That's the four pillars of the I Am Liberty show. Now, we're always going to talk. This is a talk show. It's a podcast. It's a show of a man talking about the things that are going on around him and other important interests in his life, as well as those four pillars. Now, they're also broad. That's what makes them great, right? Those four pillars of the I Am Liberty show are very broad, which means we can put a lot under each umbrella. But I'm not going to steer too far out into the deep waters with the rest of the sharks, okay? I'm not going out there. I'm not going out there with the Ben Shapiros who I watched berate a, a, a children's movie this morning. I watched a clip and he berated uh, the Black Panther movie for about five minutes straight. And, it, you know, it was loaded with cynicism and it was, you know what it was? It was propaganda. If you believe that the left wing can have propaganda, you better believe that the right wing can have propaganda. And that's all I see in that. I see propaganda. I see a guy who's recruiting. He's filling his pockets and he's recruiting. That's what he's doing. I'm recruiting here. I'm being a funny guy. I'm funny. Making jokes about a kid's movie. I mean, that's what it is. It's a kid's movie. At the end of the day. You give me... <laughs> It's a children's movie. And we can say whatever we want to say about it. I don't even want to talk about it. I mean, I wouldn't go I, I would never go see that movie in the theaters. I wouldn't go see it. Mainly, you want to tell you why? It's not because I have anything against a, a made up technologically advanced society behind giant walls in an Africa that wasn't destroyed by white people, quote unquote. But I have a problem with people with claws in the Marvel Universe. Because to me, there's only one guy with claws in the Marvel Universe. And that's James Howlett. There is no other claw-bearing creature worth paying attention to except for maybe Sabretooth because he's the arch-rival of the man with the claws. You know, you can go into the adamantium-infused Hulk if you really want to nerd out. He was pretty cool with claws, I'm not going to lie. But to me, to go sit down and watch a movie with a guy about the claws... I, I've never read Black Panther ever. There was no interest in Black Panther for me. It had nothing to do with the fact that the character was black. Like I said, I'm a massive fan of the Wolverine. James Howlett, a.k.a. Logan, a.k.a. the Wolverine. Weapon X, whatever. So to me, there was no interest there. Never was any interest there. The only guy that I was worried about was the adamantium rage. 
And I'm, I also, if you remember not long ago, I, I'm kind of tired out of the live action Marvel and the live action DC. I think it's, I don't think it's working for me personally. So all I can give you is my personal outlook. So no, watching Ben Shapiro waste his precious time on TV talk about and, and make fun of the Black Panther movie and the fact that people are excited about it. It shows me what I don't want to be. Because what does it solve? Nothing. What are you solving? What are you making better of the, on this planet? Are you making something better on this planet with the yarmulke and making fun of... No. Same deal. You watch your Tucker Carlson. You, you see the same thing right and left. The same guys. Right? You watch Anderson Cooper and you could... I mean, it's... Come on. I don't watch any of them. But every once in a while, I watch a Ben Shapiro on YouTube. And the one I watched today was a laughing stock. And it further drove home the fact that this is the I Am Liberty show. And we're going to talk about four things. Four pillars, right? We'll throw some news in there from time to time. We'll throw some personal interest in their personal stories because that's what the show has been. But the focus has got to be on strong communities. It's got to be on healthy Americans. It's got to be on dynamic lifestyles and, of course, self-sufficiency. And solutions therein. All right, so when we get back, we're going to talk a little bit about each. One of the four pillars is dynamic lifestyles, and I've been getting probably the most questions about dynamic lifestyles. I think... Knowing the I Am Liberty show, you feel pretty good about strong communities, feel pretty pretty good about self-sufficiency and healthy Americans. And, of course, healthy Americans, how broad, right? Strong communities, not as broad. Dynamic lifestyles, I think people are getting a little hung up on, so I want to... We can focus on that a little bit in this one. Because, again, very broad. But what I like about the four pillars is they give you four things to focus on in your own life. Right, four things that you can think about and conscious, consciously move towards. Or maybe even four goals per day. How have I uh, made my community stronger? How have I made myself healthier? How have, I, how have I had a more rewarding life today? And what have I done to secure that? And how have I been more self-sufficient today? But like I said, most, most of the questions are coming in about the dynamic lifestyles element. It may be something I have to write a... maybe write a little report on, write a little book on. I'm not sure. I'm not entirely sure yet. But when I say dynamic lifestyles, what comes to mind when I first brought it on... You don't have your signal on, dude. <clears throat> when I first brought it on was this idea of doing... A, doing more of the things you like. Doing more of the things you like, the things that you really like, and the things in life that you like, <clears throat> which is important, because we think the things that we like all reside inside of our phone, right? The things that we like are all inside of our Xbox or inside of our phone. That's what I really like to do with my time, and there's nothing wrong with spending some time there, but you got to be cognitive of how much time you spend. You only have so much time, right? This thing is counting down. No matter how young you are, you have to understand you're in a countdown. You're in a race. The finish line is death. And what you do along your road is uh, what you're going to remember. And I think when we get in this situation, when human beings get in this situation where they're doing the same six things every day, the same ten things every day, I think it's really bad. I think it's really bad for your brain. I think it's really bad for your health and your mood and all that stuff. But when I say doing more of the things you like, I also want to talk about doing different things as well. Right? So see things with your own eyes. Touch things. Try things. Try challenging things. To me, that is what a dynamic lifestyle is all about. I'll give you a very real example. Now, a lot of... I don't know know what the average person... How many times a year they frequent a museum or a library or a a science center or something like that. 
But I can tell you right now, living a dynamic lifestyle doesn't have to be about going places, right? You think about dynamic lifestyles, a lot of people tell me that they want to, they have these big giant goals of traveling here and there, and then, you know, maybe some people want to hunt in certain spots across the nation, that kind of thing. These are big goals in a dynamic lifestyle. I think they're part of it. You know, I think these vacations and travel and yeah, sure. That definitely adds depth to your life, right? But I think you have to find things locally and find things that you can do on a regular basis to have a dynamic lifestyle. For me, one of the biggest things is the outdoors because the outdoors is seasonal as well, right? It's a seasonal thing. Spring's coming. What am I thinking about? I'm thinking about crappy fishing. I'm thinking about turkey hunting. I'm thinking about stripers coming in. I'm thinking about the Shad Run, the James River. You know, these things add depth to your life. And this is just one one piece. You know, then the summer comes. Okay, the James River is going get, to get shallow. I get to walk my favorite place. I get to walk and cast for giant gar or catfish. And, of course, my favorite of all fish, which is the, the beautiful bronzeback smallmouth bass. And then the fall comes, and here we go. Right? Deer hunting season comes in. You can first you get archery season, then you get, you know, if you muzzle load, you can do that. And then you get firearm season. And everything is basically you can shoot up everything in the fall. It's not <laughs> there's not a lot of things off limits in the fall. So just in the outdoors alone, you have this dynamic lifestyle. But for those of you who aren't into that, those of you who don't want to get into that, those of you who can't. Right, we're in the doldrums right now. February, the, year, the the month that I was born, the only good thing that ever happens in February is my birthday and my father's birth. The rest of it can go to hell. It's a horrible month. I mean, it's the most boring and cold and miserable month if you live in the Northeast. But at my local fine arts museum, the VMFA, they they've been they have traveling exhibits, which most museums do, and this one. I've been very excited about for a long time. It's the Terracotta Army. Uh, you know, 2,000 plus year old army created by uh, an emperor who was named King at 13 years old. A guy who was pretty much, pretty much obsessed with immortality. So he took some 8,000 Terracotta figures that were made by hand, no less, by his the people that he ruled made by hand these terracotta warriors some were archers we saw we saw the real things last night like the real terracotta army not all of it obviously it was about 10 12 maybe 10 12 pieces there one was a horse that you wouldn't even have believed the, the, the skill and we're talking about 2000 plus years ago we're talking about 240 or 220 i think bc and it was incredible. And it cost $20. Well, the VMFA is free. So I can go look at fine art. And like most places, you can go study fine art free. And I know it's one of those weird things, right? Fine art. Meh. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to You've been brainwashed. You've been brainwashed into thinking that you're only allowed to look and, and like certain things. But the study of fine art is something that's incredibly accessible. And when you talk about cultural diversity, studying fine art gives you the ability to see cultures at their finest, right? You get to see cultures at their highest level of achievement, whether it be in sculpting or painting. And it's, there's something magic about that. And in a world like we live in here, especially in this country, that is very important. To me, it's important to take a look at the Egyptian society through their art and through their sculpting. For me, it's important to have a look at the Indian culture, not the Native American, but the actual Indian culture. You know, and to see the sculptings of their gods, like the god Shiva, and to see these things and go, oh, wow, this is, this is what society in India looks like at its very best. You know, you don't see skyscrapers when you go to the... <laughs> It's not measured in, in national debt, you know, or educational whatever. See these cultures at their finest. And, and I took my oldest son and we strolled through the halls and we seen 
crossbow bolts that were 2,000 plus years old, and we saw limestone armor that was made with copper wire. It was made with copper wire and literal squares of limestone that were chiseled and chopped and strung together by this copper wire. I can't even imagine how heavy it must have been. Probably be pretty good training. And I looked over the, this armor with my son and I said to myself, it's an amazing thing. And this is dynamic lifestyles. This is what a dynamic lifestyle exists of. It exists of seeking out these rare or interesting things and going and seeing them. Giving yourself enough time, giving yourself maybe the right people around you to just really appreciate it. To sink in, dissolve into it and, and, and come to the conclusion that, wow, this is what humanity is about. It's not about, <laughs> it's not about social media. Yeah, social media is something, and in a way, it's something amazing. But when you sit down and you look at a civilization that was 2,000 plus years old, and you realize that this emperor had such a hold on his people, he put these 8,000 terracotta figures in his grave site, and they were in battle formation now, before they were buried. This is what I mean by a dynamic lifestyle. And like I said, this cost $20. $20 bucks for me to get in. My son was free because he's six. If we went in there to look at any number of busts and sculptures and paintings, it would be free. These are the things that are all around you. And these are things that you can do to make yourself... Because this is why I'm telling you to do it. It's not because you need more art in your life. You need to be more civilized or more cultured or whatever it is. No. You get a feeling, first of all, for humanity when you have a dynamic lifestyle. You get a feeling for nature or humanity because that's usually where these things take you, right? You usually either wind up seeing the very best of what nature has to offer or the very best of what humanity has to offer. That's whether you go to a science museum or, like I said, a library or to an arts museum or if you go out into the wild. Or if you do something else with people. It doesn't have to be that. But this is what I'm telling you. You get peaks when you live a dynamic lifestyle. You get peaks at what the pinnacle of humanity is. And all I can tell you about social media is you're more likely to get peaks of what the very worst of humanity is. All right, so focus on your dynamic lifestyle. Thank you. Short show. I enjoyed it. We'll see you live Wednesday. Go to the new website, IamLibbyShow.com, if you haven't checked it out, and get the new book, $2, Man Fit, Man Live. If you're looking to be something special in the year 2018, if you're looking to get yourself in shape and get your body right and get your mind right, Man Fit, Man Live is the 30-day program to make that happen. $2. Go check it out, IamLibbyShow.com.